Good evening, good evening. Hopefully everybody is doing okay. Give me just a second here. Before we get into any topics, um, I'm going to give you a, a note. Uh, if you didn't see the user agreement was updated and there is something everybody should check out depending on your feelings on the marketing tab and stuff, but we'll get in that in just a second. Let me make sure everything is going good and everyone can hear me. Reseller Nerd, I honestly remembered your name, uh, Danielle, actually this time. I just saw one of your posts from the other day. Um, just a second there. Give me just a second. Just making sure everything's large enough for me to actually see with my vision. Um, and I think I got everything correct. Uh, so if you didn't see the user agreement was coming out, uh, came out today, go to your marketing communication settings. You can turn off a bunch of stuff that'll stop you from getting some junk. Just FYI, marketing uh, communication settings. If you go to account settings, you can get to it from the top left of your hub, right where your name is, your actual account name. Just pop down the little arrow to expand it, and then you'll see account settings right there. That's the easiest way to get to it from anywhere in your hub. I don't go anywhere else other than the hub these days at all. Just FYI, I don't use my phone, so I couldn't tell you how to get to it from a phone. Um, I haven't been sourcing in like six or eight, I haven't been out of the house in six or eight days or Maybe it's been a couple days longer than that. I know at least since last um, Friday night because I had a we had a kind of emergency on Friday night. So anyway, everything's fine. We're back on a roll. So um, obviously, uh, for those who saw the video yesterday, eBay's doing some very drastic, stupid changes. It may not seem like monetary drastic to to you, but we'll talk just for a minute about a few things, and then I want to make some suggestions, offer some advice on reselling in 2022. I get a lot of questions on other sites. We're going to try and go through some other sites today as well, too. Uh, we're going to talk about Shopify. In fact, everybody who follows me, especially on Patreon, knows I've been working on Shopify and things like that. Now, I haven't pushed out the Amazon yet. We're going to talk about something that a, one of my patrons um, brought to my attention. Now, I heard some rumble about it, but we'll talk about that in a minute here, too. Now, with your fees on eBay. <clears throat> Hopefully everybody went and at least gave their opinion. If you're, you're fine with the fees, tell eBay you're fine with the fees. Whatever your opinion is, go to the update, uh, the winner, winner update, do the comment section, join the conversation, I think the link says, and, and comment on there. If you don't think it's right, tell them that. If you want them to fix the glitches, tell them that. That's all I'm asking everybody to do. Just do that one thing. It's going to help everybody. At least it's an open forum where eBay can say, yeah, there's people saying stuff about it. If no one says anything about anything, nothing's ever going to happen. The problem with a lot of that is most people don't read all that stuff in the first place. And even if they do read the important stuff to them, they're not going to go and comment. They're not going to waste their time. I don't usually waste my time. I don't do any other surveys or I pretty much stop messing with the eBay expressions and the whole works. Um, but on stuff like that, that new rolls out, I really think that there's other folks that probably look at that, like people in the home office over there. I, I think they would hope to see if it's rolling out good. They need to know if there's issues and all kinds of stuff. So what they normally would look, I would hope that they would at least look at that because they even said that they would be uh, responding to uh, comments for a certain length of time every day. I think it was seven to three or something. I didn't see any comments, but you know maybe I just wasn't looking close enough. I know the page count of how many people were commenting was six or seven last night, I think, just before I went to bed. It was pretty late, so something like that. Now, if, if you sell something for $100 on eBay, and let's say it's median. I don't uh, specifically have the, the exact amount, but it's like, what, 14% and some odd change. Uh, so basically, you're automatically, that $100 item is only going to be $86. Now, that's usually where everybody's math stops. It's only 14% or 14.37, whatever it is. I don't, it does, I'm just, we're just throwing a number out there. you got to remember that if, you're, if shipping's included or if, your um you're, you're adding on shipping as calculated which is what we do you got to think about tax as well you're paying a fee on that so even though it says it's 14 percent, it's more like 15 15 to depending on how big the object is and how much the shipping cost is because you're still deducting those fees from your shipping and your taxes from how much you're going to get 
So instead of it only being fourteen dollars out of out of a hundred, it's you're paying a dollar, two dollars maybe an extra fee. So it's actually sixteen probably for most people. Now, if you do promoted listings, that commission that they take is now coming out of the actual shipping costs and the actual tax as well. So you, if you're doing promoted listing, you're getting double dipped by eBay. If you're if you're shipping a lot of stuff too, you got to include the cost that raises up for shipping uh, costs. Like if the post office raises it or UPS or whoever you happen to be using raises the rates, eBay's getting another percentage increase above and beyond that. So the, the point of it is it's not whatever percentage they say it is because you're not getting any of the benefit from the, the shipping cost or the actual tax cost. That's nothing. You don't even see the tax, but you're added on a fee for that. So whatever the fee is, you're, you've got to at least figure out that it's higher than what they're saying. So if if you only think it's 14%, you know, when you're paying for shipping and they're, they're dipping you on the taxes, it's more than that. It's always more than what they state it is. Technically, that's all it is on the numbers on the page, but coming out of the total sale of the item, it's more than what the fees say they are. You don't get to keep the shipping and you don't get to keep the taxes. It, it, it's, a, it's a necessity. It's a, a fee you have to pay. It's a cost of doing business, the shipping part. And again, they're dipping in on it. They're dipping in on the taxes. We're on the platform. We know that's what they're doing. End of story. There's not much you can do about it. You can work out plans. And that's, again, we're going to talk about other things in, in just a minute here, but... <clears throat> you can work out your pricing structure, whatever you want, but it's not the fee that they're telling you it is, in my opinion, because I'm, I'm being dipped on from the shipping costs. I'm losing 14 cents for every dollar, if it's a media item, for the shipping costs. So 14 more cents added on to the $14, or if it's, you know, a $20 shipping cost. It's a dollar, what, a dollar for two, 280, is that what it is? Uh, one, yeah, 280. So now you're three dollars more off. So instead of 14 dollars in fees for a hundred dollar sale, it's going to be um, what did I just say? I'm, I'm sorry, I've been talking all day long. So it's like 17 bucks. And then you've got your taxes. If it's a thousand dollar item, taxes are a little bit on there. And so a fee on that taxes is again going to add up. So whatever the fee says on the fee structure, in my mind, I don't look at it as that's the fee. I've got to add a higher percentage rate off the item because I'm not. My my shipping costs as a as a calculated shipping goes in expense column. It's deducted from the amount of revenue eBay reports as my grand total that's processed through as a third party. What's I can't think of what the code is for that, but um, I have somebody do my taxes. So I haven't I haven't looked at it in a few years, but that's how it works. So I've got a file that has all my all that kind of stuff in it. I've got another file that pulls and puts all my taxes into it. It all comes off an Excel spreadsheet. It breaks down to a P&L statement. From that P&L statement, it's got line total or line item totals, which are totals for every dime that I spent on shipping, every dime here, every dime there, all the ret everything that's my whole business is on one long, well, it's, it's a couple pages long, but it's a, a spreadsheet. So everything is there, and I can look at the state of my business on every single line that happens in my entire business, wherever I'm selling it. It's all on one page. One real, well, page, one real long spreadsheet is what it is. Like the olden days when places I worked, uh, the P&L statement was usually like two pages long, but the, the corresponding paperwork was printed on a dot matrix printer, and it was stored in these binders with the big cardboard tops, like a fancy glossed one on the top and the bottom. And um, you actually had to thread uh, like little tubes of metal, and you had to screw them. It was a long process to put one of those together if, you've, if you're not from old school back in those days. But that's what I do with my stuff. And I've got to assume that those fees into there. So again, a 14% fee on, a, on something is usually higher, 15, 16. It depends, again, what you're sending out there. So just, just think of it that way. Think of it that way because that's the way it is. If, you, if you're calculating, even if you add in the shipping costs, you've still got to separate how much you're spending on the shipping out of that item. So whichever way you do it it's your, your call whatever works best for anybody else that's fine whatever uh, but again the, the fees aren't exactly what they're telling you they are so it's inching its way up to the 20 percent mark so don't think it's not going to get there at ebay um again that, that's again my opinion but what, where else is it's going uh, again i've asked everybody if you're not sure please check their stocks 
check the trending on the stocks. If, if, even if you don't care about financials, if you have a stake in eBay, please just look at the numbers. Um, if you want to know what's going on when the fourth quarter numbers come out, at least look at those. If you didn't look at the third quarter numbers, please go back and look at last year's third quarter numbers. It would be an eye-opener for, for most people out there if you have a stake in the company. We're stakeholders. We have a, a stake in eBay doing well. I would think anybody out there would because it means you're going to make better money. And if, if this, the site doesn't address the drop in, in actual merchandise being sold, or they address it only by raising the fees, that's that's working in the opposite direction. So... You know, I'm done with which with you know ranting and raving about it, but these are factual things as a business owner you need to know. And again, what are you getting for a raise in service? If someone, if I raise a service, if I'm going to raise the value on something that I produce or make or whatever, it, it's got to be a benefit to the person I'm raising it to. It, there's got to be a bona fide reason. You can't just say economy and I'm going to raise it. You know, it, it just doesn't work that way. That's just false a false pretense in my opinion i don't raise a price unless there's a reason you know i, I most anything that i've charged for has been the same groups or whatever i do it's it's always the same i've never touched it i'm not changing the service or anything else now if the service is bad and you raise it that's not a really good thing either i know there's a lot of people that'll say you know a lot of the stuff doesn't happen like your items just don't disappear well, I'm here to tell you they do. I've seen it. I've had hundreds, a thousand people probably. I could probably point you to a thousand comments that said it. Or, or people that I personally talked to and I've looked at stores even. So that's, that stuff happens. Everybody knows glitches happen every day. I'm on, I'm on all kinds of sites. I'm on YouTube. I'm, I'm all over the place just like most people are. And I only see it on eBay. <clears throat> I know eBay's supposedly so old, the, the material, the site... <clears throat> whatever you know it's not an excuse in my book because people pay for a service if YouTube was down every day or I couldn't get a video up every day it, I wouldn't want to use it I'd go to go to one of the other platforms that has videos or something I, again that's just just the way it is so you know maybe 14 percent doesn't seem high to you but when you factor in the actual true cost it is fairly it's getting up to the 20 percent mark when I weigh in the amount of time I have to deal with for the amount of glitches, it's pretty much eaten up most of the profit that I gained when eBay gave out the ZIFs, the zero insertion fees. I just want to explain this because I got a lot of hate, as I always do when I do videos like that. I deleted a bunch of nasty comments, some that I felt were, were insulting and mocking other people who commented. So I, I just want to put that out there, too. But I, I knew I was going to get attacked. I even said so yesterday, and that's exactly what happens. Um, I have a stake in eBay, as anybody probably watching this video probably does. You have a investment of time, of your life, of your, 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 your missing family. You're missing things that you could have been doing otherwise. So I think we all have a stake in, in what goes on. And I don't think there's anything wrong with calling somebody out when they make a, a terrible issue uh, already worse. If I didn't have glitches, if they fixed the glitches, if they actually had something on the update that was helpful, I would be happy to say it. I know they're doing the 30 cents, but I, the 90% of the people that I know that have a cancellation, the cancellation usually happens because the item wasn't paid for, not because it was. I, I almost, I would, I will probably honestly have only had one. I got to cancel it after the item was paid uh, issue that I can think of. Um, no, I'll take that back. I had two because eBay wouldn't, wouldn't their shipping wouldn't work, and I had to cancel it and redo it. So, yeah, that there is one case. One was eBay's fault. One was a buyer accidentally had something in his basket. And, and I let it go because uh, the person bought from me before. I, didn't, I believe their story. They were honest with me. <clears throat> if I lost $0.30 cents on, on that sale for the processing fee it's a regular buyer i would have eaten it up i'm not gung-ho again people say i'm crazy and stuff like that but i'm not i'm not going to tack eb for 30 cents on something the buyer made Eh, sometimes i've made a mistake and i could have probably canceled <clears throat> here, here i'll give you an example when if i make a mistake or we've had once or twice we dropped something a record and it cracked or somebody was wrapping something up and the tape 
the, the card slid, the tape touched the top of the card, and it ruined the card. <clears throat> in those cases, I give a refund for those, but I don't request the final fees. I messed up. Yeah, I sure, I might be able to get a couple bucks back on it. It's my fault. It's not worth the hassle to go through it. So <clears throat> I'm not I'm not a, uh, uh, an a-hole about stuff that we cause an issue. Again, if, if we were getting more benefit for what they're doing, I'd be fine with it. Um, I, I know we're doing good. I know there's a bunch of other channels that, that are, are having, you know, great sales. But there's a large, I'm not always, it, it's not always me because I'm not, I got a super chat. Well, hey, Katy, thank you very kindly. Thank you very kindly. I appreciate that. Cute, cute emoji. I can't quite see yours, but thank you, Katy, for the $5 super chat. Really appreciate it. <clears throat> Uh, you know, there, uh, I'm, a, I'm on principle. If I mess up, I'm fine with eating it if it's my fault. If eBay does it, I think they think they should do the right thing. Uh, uh, again, uh, let's, 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 for me, yesterday I was, I was furious because, again, the glitches happen every day. Today's another day, bright new day. I, 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 we'll say a story and then we'll go into some comments and questions here and we'll talk about some, some other sites. I get my, we do garbage around here. Uh, you have to pay for your own. You have to hunt it down yourself. You've got to call like a national or whatever. I'm not going to mention the name of the company, but um, <clears throat> they they raised our bill f over one payment cycle by over 20 some odd percent. That falls into the range of, um, what's it called? Um, I'm, right, I'm sorry, I've been talking so much today. We've had conference call after conference call with people, video chats. Um, but anyway, they raised it a certain percentage. I was I was mad. Um, I called them up. Uh, I was looking into it. That's the price. Blah blah blah. You know, I'm sorry. This is because of gas and all this other stuff. Mind you, around here, gas prices have been the same forever. But um, so I, I said, well, let me let me get back with you. I still had a week or so. I was nice. I was just going to see. I'm like, well, that seems really high. Maybe the other guys are doing it too. I call the only other one. We're out in the country. I call the one that the city seems to use. They dropped the other guys that we were using off the city charter, so they don't even mention them they recommend anymore, which I'm like, well, that's a little weird. So I, I call the, the only other competitor I could find, and we usually drop off our recycling. I know this might be a little bit of an outside story, but we usually do our recycling on our own. I'll drop it off once a week. I didn't want to have the mess with another can and all that kind of stuff. But I figured let's just get the let's get a recycling can over here. So I get the recycling ordered and stuff. I get a total and it's like 30% cheaper for two cans instead of just one. So I'm like, no, no way. And then I said, well, is this just some introductory where I'm going to get screwed? Well, no, you can get a two-year contract on that. You know, you can pay a year in advance. I always pay a year in advance. I did it with the old people too, the old company. And I says, well, what happens after the two years? Well, you can renew it. So I'm like, well, you know, this guy's been telling me at the other company, it's a national company, so is the one we're dealing with, telling us, no, this is the best price. We're, we're the best ones in town, blah, 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 blah. I know I should have looked, but, you know, the city originally had it named. And I'm like, ah, you know, and I figured, you know, it wasn't terrible price. But to come to find out that the other people are 20 some odd percent cheaper for double the service. So with that thought in mind, I'm gonna I'm taking what eBay did as a, as a blessing because at this point, I wouldn't have looked into something else and a few other options and some other things that were potentials and wouldn't be aggressively going after them if this hadn't happened. So uh, again, <clears throat> I said yesterday that I would be done with it yesterday. I'm, I'm done with, with in that mood of it. Um, I'm, you know, I, I know who we're dealing with. I said that last year. I know a lot of people say, why don't you leave if they're so terrible? They still have dominance in the market. I'm a business. A business decision to dump off 40% of reselling would be stupid. You know, so I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I can, I've worked for some terrible bosses. I'm sure there's a ton of people out here. I'm sorry, hang on. Well, Michael Brook, thank you very kindly as well. I honestly and sincerely thank that $5, $5 super chat. Again, I, I, no one has to do that. I, I appreciate everybody coming on and hitting the thumbs up is great too. Uh, thank you very kindly. If you have a question when you do that, I'll be happy to hit up your questions too. That's not necessary, but again, I, I appreciate that. That's It's kind of surprising. But yeah, thank you very kindly. Um, <clears throat> so there are other things out there. If, if eBay wouldn't keep doing these things, it wouldn't make me more aggressively go after other things. Let's just put it that way. So sometimes it's good for them to screw you over because it puts you in a different frame of mind for a little while and then you spend a lot more time. I can't stop doing something. I've got terrible OCD and issues like that, ADHD. I'm terrible on stuff like that. If you watch my videos, you probably, I'm not normal. I act weird. I know to a lot of people, maybe not, but 
I'm not the, the normal person. I don't watch TV. I don't eat, do sugar anymore. There's a lot of stuff I don't do anymore. Um, I, I, it helps push me in a mood. So last night I was up till God knows when. Um, I was up this morning. I was popping. Some people got emails. There might be some in here that got one of the emails, folks I've talked to for a while. So I've got some things in the works. And I, I, I'm... I'm going back to the old school th thoughts on things. We're gonna we're gonna delve, as I said, into some other platforms. But it, it takes eBay to kick us, you know, three or four times a year with with these issues. October twelfth was the last one, and again we started doing different things. Then we set up some different goals. I've scrapped our goal for a hundred thousand listings on eBay for this year. I'm not gonna worry about. I'm not even gonna think about that at this point. Um, there's bigger fish to fry at this point and bigger opportunities. Um, I see the writing on the wall for what they're doing, and I see that, you know, I don't see the CEO stand for more than a few years. So, you know, I can hold it out. I'll be working on my other stuff as well, too. If you sell crafts, craft stuff, the number one site for crafts is Etsy. Etsy is great for antiques, for collectibles. Vintage items are good on Etsy. You got to know that you're paying for four months in advance, 20 cents for for each item in advance, the day that you list them, you have to start with 10 items to get your site running. I've had an Etsy account for many, many years. They do stupid things too, but I feel more respected on Etsy, and I feel that it, you have a little more, more sway as a as a, a, a reseller on the platform. I like the, the, the creation of stuff, so for me, I've always liked Etsy. We buy Weebles on Etsy, Vintage Weebles. Anytime there's Vintage Weebles on any platform, I buy it. I buy it from now a Spanish uh, company. There's a big, huge Libra, I think. What's it? I've got it saved on here, but Libra or something like that. We've got a Japanese site. I've even got one from Taiwan we buy from. Um, I do buy from a couple Chinese sites. Never had an issue. We do some LED work that my son actually creates from scratch. So we do buy from Alibaba. Um, I know people may say that's hateful or whatever because I'm buying from them. But uh, unfortunately, they're the only ones who make some of the very oddball things that we use. You can't find certain wavelengths of LEDs on the open market anywhere else but made over there. Uh, some of the filaments we use for 3D printers only come from overseas. They have some special ones for things that we do. So, you know, I'm not going to defend it. A lot of things are made there, but that's just the way it is. They do offer much more in, in variety. But I work with a lot of different sites. There's a lot of different options. There's a lot of different things you can do these days. I have good faith in a lot of the companies that we do uh, deal with. Uh, there's another French one that we use. I was going to call that one out too, darn it. I know I've had a video on it, but I can't remember the name of it. It's a huge toy site in France that we've dealt with for probably three or four years. If you are if you create stuff, if you make stuff, we're going to talk about that first because there's a lot of options other than, than Feebay. Um, there's a lot of options out there. Homemade by Amazon is there. Um, you're going to see, and I may show some of it out. I'm not really sure how much I want to broadcast it up, but I've got some of our stuff going up on Amazon. I've got some of our stuff on other toy sites myself right now. One thought that a lot of people think that is, is essential is you have to be on the biggest site out there, all the big name brands, to get your stuff done. I'm a niche person. I know there's a lot of folks. In fact, I see Duncan up at top here. He's asked to listen later. He's probably getting anchovy pizza and hanging out in the south. Yeah, repeat buyer. We're going to be talking about repeat buyers uh, as well coming up soon. I have, I'll be uh, having an article on that actually for with Ina as well too. But um, yeah, well, I've actually brought up the MCO or MC011, and I'm I'm actually looking into that. So Reed S. Bennett Sr., I'm actually looking into that. I've had probably 20 people this week alone. Out of nowhere, I've been getting a lot of people telling me that exact same thing. I even brought that up for a while uh, yesterday with eight people having thousands of dollars held. Um, please look at the user agreement. There are some, uh, they've now posted, as I've said before, that they can hold your money for 30 days. And there's a bunch of stuff that's posted that wasn't up there word for word. And now it's for verbatim spoken on there. I would suggest everybody read the new user agreement line by line. Um, I did spend some time doing a lot of it. I didn't get through all of it today because I wanted to make sure I usually compare. I usually cut and paste the screenshots of the old one versus the new one. 
And I've been doing that since I found out that they remove so much stuff. So if you look at them, you know, year by year, you can even go to the Internet Archive and use the Wayback Machine, and you can look at the pages, what they used to look like last year, the year before, but some of it's missing. So I don't know if you know that, but um, I've shown a video on that even before in the past. But, yeah, there, there's a lot going on with that. Um, with, with stuff that you make as a niche person, Duncan's a niche person. He's, he does stamps too. He loves Queen Vicks, Queen Vicks, Queen Victoria. The, uh, for something to be considered Victorian, Queen Victoria has to be alive. Edwardian, King Edward has to be alive. So if you're putting something on eBay and you're trying to put Victorian and it was made in 1926, it's not Victorian. So just FYI, I get that question quite often. I just thought I'd shoot that out there. Um, but niche markets can use niche sites. So if you're a toy guy and there's some toy sites, there, there are things you can do and reach out. There are some toy sites that will put stuff on there, you know, at a commission basis or on approval and things like that, too. If you're unaware of that, you should probably look into that. If you do specialty stuff or you make your own action figures or you customize action figures. I know a lot of people may not do that, but there's a big market. There's YouTube videos of people just showing their custom work. Again, it's for advertising, but that's fine. Some of the, the custom toy action figure guys I thought were amazing. I used to, and when we lived in Florida, I lived next to a guy that would custom do Hot Wheels. And he showed me an inside trick how to take them apart and put them back together where no one would ever know you touched them. Um, I wouldn't do that. And he doesn't, he does them in strange colors. He did them. So in fact, he may be one of the YouTubers. I haven't, I haven't talked to him in probably 15 years, but I, I know some things on stuff like that. And I find it f very amazing. I find it fascinating. I love watching if I got something on and I, I rarely do, but if I've, I've got a screen over here, it's a bigger screen so I can see it. Um, if something's on, sometimes there'll be just stuff playing in the background. Um, or you'll I'll have a video playing if I'm not watching a YouTube like Dom or somebody, but <clears throat> a million dollar pedals i watched one of theirs the other day too but um you know i like watching stuff like that if you can do stuff like that there's money into that in that too and i know there's people in here right now probably for sure that actually make stuff do stuff create stuff even stuff that you can use to create stuff even if you don't create but you get stuff like i do bulk lots sometimes of victorian scrap victorian die cuts and paper those sell very well and on, on, on etsy etsy's the market for those stuff there's some things if you create stuff that the only place that I personally know to buy them at a reasonable rate here in this country are Etsy sellers. Um, Adam Savage, if you know who he is from Mythbusters, he buys from there. He buys stuff. He's got vendors that he personally uses and stuff. I got vendors I personally use on Etsy myself. I have no problems with, <clears throat> you know, fees on certain aspects with, say, Etsy because... I think for overall, for my investment, I get a pretty darn good return depending on how I'm pricing my items and what the items are. Every site has a certain drawback. Obviously, Etsy has limits on it. Uh, Google, your Google Merchant Center, you can't do used items. So, you know, that has some issues. That's not Google Shopping. That's a totally different aspect. It's kind of like um, you can sell through PayPal. You can actually create and drop listings from PayPal, straight from PayPal. You can make them up in PayPal. And again, if you don't know, you can ship anything from PayPal, including media items. You click to ship other items or click uh, other shipping option, I think is what it's called. <clears throat> you got to click to one button and it's on mine is the fourth button over on my main uh, target screen. And then it'll go to one more page. And from there, you cut and paste your titles. It doesn't import, but you can cut and paste them from eBay and easily do it. <clears throat> I use it for media. I had a couple other people bring up, hey, you can't print media from Pirate Ship. you got to do the extra shipping options. It's there. There's a page on it. I think I linked it for two people today. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, uh, GGGG, how you doing? Barlight Broker, welcome, welcome. Uh, well, MCO, or MC011 is a uh, code you will get when eBay locks your money up. Look it up on eBay. I don't know if it actually says that in eBay, but that's what the, the message says to you. So if you look that up on error code, you'll see, not on eBay usually. I usually find the, the error codes or those codings on other sites. There's a Reddit board that I go to. Um, eBay, I I have so many favorite places. I, I, can't, I don't remember the name of it, but it's an eBay Reddit board. Maybe I've shown it in a Patreon video maybe once or twice, but... <clears throat> It's it's I've been looking into that. I've brought it to several other people's attentions who are far more knowledgeable on stuff like that than I am. 
Um, and as, as well as I've talked to a couple sites or at least sent some notices off to a few sites to say, hey, look at this. Um, I, I may have some more information on that later, but I'm not going to go too much into that. That's what the deal is on that one there. Pingji, good afternoon. How are you doing? Anaheim, well, must be nice in Anaheim. Disgruntled Octopus, how are you doing? I got Jackass Retro. Hey, Jackass Retro, how are you doing? <clears throat> I was late for the last live. Hey, Crystal, how are you doing? I still have a little bit of stuff going on from being sick, so you'll have to forgive me if I <clears throat> clear my throat and stuff. Um, anyway, let, let's get... I don't want to waste a lot of time on anything but the topics here. I know everybody wants, to, wants ideas and thoughts on where to sell. I'm not telling anybody to jump ship on eBay at this point. If it's not business conductive or conducive for, excuse me, for your business, do what you need to do for your business. For me, it's a considerable amount of our, it's 40% of our, our, our reselling rev. I'm not going to cut it off. Uh, again, I've worked for some terrible bosses because it paid the bills and I had a wife and kids and it's my responsibility to pay my bills and take care of my wife and kids. So I've dealt with some bosses who were probably some of the nastiest people I've ever worked with. You know, especially like at Cracker Barrel, Applebee's for one. I've worked with a racist boss at Applebee's as well. I'm not going to tell you what was said to me, but um, I did voice my opinion on that. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to say which store, but you can probably guesstimate. Most people know where I'm talking about. But again, that's how it was. That was the culture of where I worked with them. It was a franchise. They had 50 or some odd stores. But anyway, I don't work with them. I threw my keys at my boss, literally, and I left one day. Never went back, but, um, you know, uh, take it at heart with wherever you're going to sell them. <clears throat> Every site, again, has its has its good, good aspects and bad aspects. Every site. Um, <clears throat> there's one site that has more of the bad ones than any other one, but, um, again, Amazon does have homemade by Amazon. You can do stuff like that and sell it on Amazon without an issue. It's big markets. You can advertise on Amazon. If, if <clears throat> Now, on eBay... I don't do promoted listings. I don't have refillables in the store I share with you. I don't have replenishables that I can constantly have a solid listing and I never have to mess with it. For me, my listings go up and down. I, I end them myself similar because you have to with stuff. Once it gets old on eBay, they don't show it anymore. We've all come to that conclusion, I think, at this point. I spend hours a week dealing with that. So <clears throat> everyone has a benefit. Discogs, you don't need pictures for records as long as it's a standardized record that's in their catalog. It's easy to list. There's no, it's as cheap as can be. So there, there's other options for stuff like that, records. I personally know somebody who makes the majority of their income from cheaper records on Amazon. Low-valued buyers, um, on Am or not on Amazon, on Discogs. They list far more items than I could ever list because, again, they're doing no pictures for 95% of what they list. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, again, there's other places. Dell Camps. Oh, somebody else brought this up to me. Okay, for those postcard sellers out there, I know there's a lot of them. I know people watch the videos. I see people post postcards and ask questions on them all the time eBay used to have, and I, I haven't confirmed this because eBay seems to, the way they've addressed it, it's harder to see their total amount of listings in any category anymore. But the number of items in the postcard category, from my, from my basic look as well, is down almost 2 million, 2 million less postcards on eBay than just a few years ago. And that's, what would that be, like a 27% decrease in the amount of postcards overall on the site. Dow Camps is a very big site. Dow Camps has a lot more of various catalog item or category items than eBay does. Look it up. Dow Camps. D-A-L-K-A-M-P-E, I think is what it is. It's a favorite place in my hair. I've got a place for it right up here somewhere in my top bar. My bar is full these days. i got so many sites we use. But <clears throat> you can sell anything on that site. It's run by a foreign, foreign government, or not a foreign country, but... You know, I don't have any issues with it. eBay UK is run by UK representatives, I would imagine, in UK. Um, same with Australia for Duncan there. I've watched a couple of their eBay Australia videos that, that eBay puts out. I, I always want to see what's going on. I do buy from some of the foreign eBay sites um, because it's the only way you can get foreign import weebles. Most people don't even import them. That's another reason why you can get certain things on Etsy that you can't get anywhere else here in this country. I do that. 
and I've talked about this before, to get items, let's just throw this out there real quick. I buy stuff from overseas and sometimes I buy it in bulk. I bring it back over here. I get to keep part of it and I can sell the extras here because I'll be the only one that has them here in this country because no one else is importing them from other eBay sites or other sites in general like Libre and some of the other sites over there. So I'll bring them over here. I buy something. I keep part of it. And then I can turn around and sell it because I'm the only one who took the initiative to pay the extra money to import. And most people think, oh, it's too much. But, you know, when you weigh out the cost factor, you buy a little more or something, you can bring it in legally to the country and then you can break it up and sell it. And stuff like that, usually I can sell on Amazon very, 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 very easy or Etsy again because certain things sell better there. <clears throat> It's always been that way that stuff can sell better on one site versus another site. It's always been that way. Always, 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 always. Some records I can sell better on Amazon. A 78 record in some cases will sell far higher, far quicker, and far better without any return issues on Amazon as long as you pack it quicker. Again, it depends on which one. Large chunk of records would not be wise to list on there unless you're direct syncing, importing, exporting them from another platform. Again, I, I've, I've played with that. We've got, we do records on Amazon. I even do cylinder records on Amazon, believe it or not, and I sell them on Amazon occasionally. Not super regularly, but they do sell. So if you're gonna, if you're <clears throat> seriously having the issues, you don't wanna deal with eBay, too many glitches. Again, there are a lot of them. It's not a huge amount of revenue for you in the begin with. Your time may be better spent somewhere else. It may be, I don't know, I don't know your business, but. For, for us again, I've we've made made again another we slashed our boards. We wrote up new a new plan, a new 30 day plan now instead of going out for the, the whole year plan because I don't know what's going to happen as we progress. Um, vintage toys again, uh, there's niche sites sites that I'm now going to be investing more into. We'll be sending more off to heritage. We'll be sending more off to um, some of the other uh, um, auction sites that there are out there. There's probably five or six good ones that you can have them auction off your merchandise. And in many cases, like Heritage, I've sent people to Heritage from, from Patreon. So far, every single one that I've sent, they were extremely happy, even with the percentage taken off. Again, I'm not trying to say stop doing eBay. I'm not stopping it. If, if I would say that, I would probably be stopping it too. And I'm not trying to stick up for eBay in any way, shape, or form, but the truth is, we when eBay screwed us with the coins, we don't list coins on eBay anymore. We found other means to satisfy our needs for coins. I don't give out everything, so I'm not going to go into coins, stamps. I've always said I don't do that on coins and stamps. Those are areas that I hold dear to my heart. My father got me into both of those. I have some of my father's collection, so I, I'm, I'm very particular. I, I'm, I've spent since I was seven, I've collected stamps and coins and stuff. So I'm not going to give out 40 years, 50 years of my experience with that one other than in Patreon usually. But <clears throat> investigate out. Books, A Books is part of Amazon, if you didn't know that. A-B-E Books is part of Amazon. That's a branch of Amazon. If, if you're selling books, try A Books as well as Amazon. Now, A Books, I think, works, works well because a lot of people don't know that they're Amazon. Just have, it's, it's owned by the same thing. It's all the same thing. So those are two big markets that are probably, if you search for a book, you're probably going to see it on Amazon or Abe first before eBay shows up. That's usually the case. It depends. If I'm looking on Amazon or looking for like a comic book per se, you might see eBay first. You might see another site too because there are some private or some smaller sites for that, that as well. Now around here, the estate sales and auction companies tend to do auctions online, locally and stuff like that. If you're not paying attention to stuff like that, I think you're missing some opportunities, especially for those folks who are doing uh, FB Marketplace, uh, Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, I know it's $5 or 5% or whatever it is. Um, there's local ones that do auctions where you can have your goods in there and it's a pickup and all that kind of stuff too. Um, once it's been picked up, there's not a return on it. So, I mean, there's a lot of other things you can do with it. If, if you're like me and you've done stuff like that and you've bought from local auction houses and then ended up bringing stuff to those same lo local auction houses, you really need to start looking at what the local auction house prices are going for you might be drastically surprised, as, as I'm not, because I look at those, but 
in some cases, depending on where you're going in the day of the week and month and all kinds of things like that, you'll find that you can actually get more money locally because a lot of the people that go there get auction fever. They'll bid more than they should, and they don't look up the items. Other, other resellers don't look up the items when they buy these things. Truth, that's truthful. Um, again, I pay attention to that. My, my, my best asset is that I usually try to know more than the other people that I'm dealing with. If I don't know more, I try to stray away or I'm very cheap because I don't want to get screwed because they know more than me. So I don't do sports collectibles. Most people would know far more than me. I don't know the players. I don't know I don't know the games. I, I mean, I played baseball back in grade school. I was good at baseball, but if I'm not playing it, I didn't get into it. I liked the 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 sport itself. I don't like watching it. You know, I don't get a thrill out of that. Football, none of that. I don't like any of that. I, Again, I liked playing it. I've played football. I wasn't a big enough kid to, to get it, but I did. I was on a baseball team for many years. I did cross country. I did, you know, the long runs and stuff, you know. So, again, I'm, I'm not, you know, I did all that stuff, uh, at least in those two sports. I liked playing soccer. I liked playing volleyball, of course. But anyway, I don't know any of that stuff. I don't know um, sports equipment. I wouldn't know a sport, what's a good sports jersey or not. So I don't mess with that. You know, if, if you're into that, there are other places for that kind of stuff as well. There are, are sites where you can sell your merchandise to even some people, and you might take a hair a little less, but you won't have shipping, you won't have... And you can sell it, you can buy it just to turn around and resell it to somebody else. You know, think of the bigger picture here. You're just talking about money. If you're happy enough at set amount of money for whatever you get, what does it matter if you sell it online or you sell it somewhere locally or you list it up somewhere on even Craig? I don't mess with Craigslist, but I know there are people that make money on Craigslist. And if you're going to do like, say, Bonanza or one of these sites that you're only going to get a few sales here, maybe a few sales there, unless you pay them extra money like on eBay or something else like that. Well, the odds are about the same as that. They might even be higher if you throw something up on Facebook local or do a local market. And in many cases, you'll probably do far better by doing one of those those markets. Now, where I live, and I know there's a few folks that live around here that pop up on the show. Um, one of them had my area code in his name. If you look around, you will find around here, there's probably... Not every single week or anything. There's probably a dozen places I could go if I wanted to drop off at auctions every month within a real reasonable driving distance. When I buy big bulk lots of stuff, I pick out what I want. And then I, at these days, since we've got so much merchandise, all the rest of it goes back usually to the source I bought it at at an auction. You know, I'll throw a little more in to bring it back to whatever it was. I'll consign it as an auction in, or as, 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 as an item for them to auction off for me. And that's usually what I do. I make my profits from the items I pull from the lots. I never really have to mess with the lots. And in occasions, I've literally sat there as I loaded it and then left what I didn't want and had them auction the rest of it off. Especially if it was, it was like a lot of records or something. They know they're going to sell it again without an issue because records always sell at the auction houses around here. Don't pinhole yourself into thinking that you can't do anything but the eBay side of it. If you've got any, any kind of reasonable town, there's tons of opportunities. I've delved in furniture. I don't like messing with big items anymore. I can sell it locally, I know, but you got to... It's not... It, for me, it's a waste. Not a waste. I shouldn't say a waste. I don't know. It, it, for me, I, it's just not my thing, I guess. I'm not thrilled about it. I like, if I find a real nice piece of vintage furniture, the wife would be mad because we always end up... She's got an arm while we bought. It's a really nice... Uh, Japanese, I think it's Japanese. It was made in like, it's really nice, made in the 20s. And we bought it to resell because the price was so right and it's still here. That was like eight years ago. I bought a podium and it's in one of my videos from a church that was torn down. And the podium was made in like 1890s. It's really fancy. It's got a cathedral front. I bought it for 25 bucks and I had an offer for it for 175 and then I, I couldn't, I felt I liked it too much. And so that's still here. So, I mean, I don't like to buy furniture because I like a lot of stuff. And if it's vintage, we had a, a bird's eye maple dresser set. I bought it to resell. This is a while ago, years back. And we ended up keeping it. You know, and, and I don't know. I, I, I like stuff too much sometimes. Um, not necessarily a hoarder because we got rid of something else. But So think outside the box. Just like I shop outside the box. I go to places people never would think of. Um, I bought some stuff to resell, let's say, at a knife store. 
and it wasn't knife related. You know, I, I don't mind popping in. We, we stopped at an auto parts place uh, a year before last. They were selling some used auto parts in an ad. And sure enough, I go there and they had a whole bunch of other stuff there. So I bought some non, they were advertising pieces like Dr. Pepper and signage and stuff. You know, it used to be a business. They had other stuff there. So anyway, think outside the box when you're trying to sell the items too. If you've got a higher dollar item, um, eBay may not be the best place for it. A, a better place may be Heritage because it would be, it would be advertised well in advance. Now, there is a drawback on some of these, these things that you may do, which would be that you may not see a return on the investment for a long while. You might, it might be out for six months, even nine months, a year. In some cases, you will not see a dime from it. But once you start a routine of doing that, you're sending stuff into every auction. You're going to get a check every quarter, every two months, every month. If you send stuff in once a month, you know, come time when the, you first get your first payment, from that point on, you're always going to have payments coming in. It's just like anything else. If you start slow on eBay, it's going to take you a while just to break even. If you start selling stuff or sending stuff into auction houses, PSA, you're going to get them graded, and then you're going to mess with sending them in. It's going to take some time for that revenue stream to build up. Don't just expect to start a whole new process and it, it instantly is there. It doesn't work like that. Everything takes time. If you can't afford it at the point, work yourself up to it. That may mean you, you sell on a site you don't want to sell on because you don't like the folks or they're, they're terrible or whatever. Whether it be eBay, Amazon, Etsy, whoever it is, the, the point of it is it's going to take you time. If you're not willing to put up with some dirty stuff, having to deal with, with crap, you know, it might not be your thing. It might not be for you. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I always heard the percentage of people that are able to run their own businesses like one in three. I don't know how true that is, but I've heard it from International. I've heard it from Mr. Wonderful and probably dozens of other people in the past if I'm listening to some motivational or something. So everything takes time. So if you if you think, oh, man, I don't want to wait for that stuff to get in there and get the money back, like, say, sending it to Heritage. If you do it all the time, you're finding stuff constantly every quarter or every month. You've got something really good, even if it's only an item or two. You'll come out better. You'll come out ahead sometimes 30, 40, even 50 percent. You're not going to get lowballed. They have a starting starting amount. If it's something hot, they're going to want to sell it for you. If it's not hot, they'll probably say, hey, I don't want to mess with it. And then you can deal with it your own way, whatever you want to do. Um, but again, even if you do that just for a few items a month or do it every three months it takes you to get something good to send in, you, you'll probably come off better like that. There are sites for records. I know I'm bouncing around, but you know, that's kind of me. Um, but like if you find rare records and stuff, there are some sites out there that's, that'll buy them for me for a really good price. When you lay in the factors of potential fraud, when you lay in fees and shipping and return options and things like that, there are some sites. You might sell it for 10% less than you might on the site. You know, 10% less take home, I should say. Um, but it, even if it's 20%, in some cases, the hassle, the headache, the time invested in the listing and answering questions, and if it's a record, getting a clip and all that stuff, it might be more beneficial just to sell it, take a few less percentage, and not have a headache for it. You know, again, I do this for freedom. I do this for, I'm not giving somebody my money. I get to say what I do with my items. I don't put, again, I don't put coins on eBay anymore. You can look at my store. I don't think there's a solitary single coin token or anything that I can think of on there at, at all. Um, I haven't put one up recently. I doubt my wife had without saying something. So, you know, there's always options for stuff. Um, back to niches for a few minutes here. I saw a lot of niches. If, if I want to sell buttons, high-end buttons, there's a site that I can just deal with just to do that. And in many cases, the button prices can be three and four times what they would go for on eBay. And again, those in Patreon know exactly what I'm talking about because I've shown it two or three times and I've shown you, they put up their sold list or sold uh, what the, their auction sell for. I've seen buttons that were literally bought off eBay sold on that site for three and four times what the list for what the sale price was on eBay. And why? Because the people selling them eBay don't know about that site. And that goes for railroad collectibles, fireman collectibles, circus collectibles. There's sports sites. There's uh, label sites. There sure as heck are a couple cigar uh, label or cigar box label sites. Depends on what you sell. There's there's marks places you can list marks for sale. Uh, you can drop links again using PayPal without even having a platform. You know, so uh, there are other options out there. Are they quick and easy to get them going? No. 
they're easy to they're easy to get they're easy to understand and stuff but it, everything you do is a whole new venture if you haven't delved into local auctions and checked out the prices go sit at one if you've never been to a live auction go go to a live auction just once you can leave if you don't like it spend the 20 minutes to drive there have a seat get a number just in case you might find something to buy but you would be surprised at what prices go for for things if you ever looked at say goodwill's auction most of the time like if i've looked for records on there in the past because our local one is one of the ones that does auctions so you can pick it up there and i wouldn't have to worry about shipping the prices that a lot of this stuff goes for and i know they think some of it goes for for good cause which is fine whatever so people will spend more for items on certain sites for various different reasons if a site is known for being like the top place to get like a rare item or a rare record or rare this or rare that or postcards show up better on Del Camp or Hip that are this type or that type or eBay has said you can't sell that type of material on there, there are other places to put whatever you think you want to list. You'd be, you'd be surprised. But it's going to take that time from you. You're going to run into the, the, the aspect that you need to invest a certain amount of time. There'll be a learning curve. Just like pricing your stuff on on eBay, if you take it to an auction and you say, I don't want you to go, your starting bid has to be said, set amount, it's the same thing. You've got to factor in all the aspects of it. If it takes you five bucks in gas to get there and you're going to take a, you know, so much worth of, of merchandise to auction and they're agreeing to auction it, you know, go from there. You have to figure in your costs on the whole aspect of it, drive time, your your time into it. Live local auctions can make you some money as well. Again, I've been blowing out junk stuff that I don't want to mess with that way in the past. You can do it on eBay as well. Um, if I listed a thousand postcards on eBay, I would probably come out ahead doing it locally at a local antiques auction list. They're giving them that thousand bunch of postcards. I would probably do better that way because I could seed it with some postcards that would still garner a certain value, eight bucks, six bucks or whatever a piece eBay, you can't quite show a thousand postcards. They don't sell for nearly as much for that reason. Um, you know, it's it, just my take on it. Look, look at, go to a local live auction, please, if you've never went. Just don't get carried away in it. But that would be a, a good option for items that you would be surprised you can get that kind of money for. Now, local, if, if you'd like it, a booth in an antique mall, my personal opinion is I would never get another booth in an antique mall because the overhead on some of the booths that I've seen, it's like 300 a month. Plus, you're paying them a certain percentage of what your sales are. And they know it because they're processing your, your sales and you got tax and all that stuff on there, too. So I personally wouldn't do that. I don't see enough traffic in most of them. If you don't have some high-end thing, that that's not a real practical. I know there are some people that make them in real good areas. But around here, I can't do that. I used to do flea markets. I used to actually have... In fact, in, in Meridian, Mississippi, we were in two of the biggest antique malls out there. There used to be one on the, the road to... Um, can't think what the name of the roads are anymore um the road that goes right through meridian there's another one that crosses and heads heads uh which direction would that be it heads uh north out of meridian um shoot there used to be a big antique mall down there i was in that mall and then there was another one in town but anyway i know that's off topic most people don't know what i'm talking about but be wise with what you do let's talk about amazon um amazon is a great place to sell um, I've done pretty much everything. Uh, FBA is good for a lot of replenishables. It's good for um, those low-valued buyers. It's great for that because if you, let's say, buy a wholesale lot of something, your profit is going to be, say, 7 bucks a pop, but you can get a 1,000 of them, and it's, a, it's in the top, say, 1,000 sellers in that category. It's worth it for that seven buck because I just dump a thousand of these into a box. And in some cases, if you're smart, you get a 30 day bill of lading, meaning that you can take possession of the merchandise. You can not have to pay for 30 days. And in some cases, depending on the people you buy from the wholesaler, you can actually have them ship it in a pallet to Amazon. So you first don't have to pay for the merchandise. So again, you've got to have some good bank contacts and stuff we do we've been doing it for a long time you get a um, letter of guarantee from the bank and anyway I, i've talked about that before so you can literally get a thousand dollars worth of merchandise and, or a thousand items and not even have to really touch it or box it up 
you know, so there are other options. There's nothing wrong with sending stuff in and boxing your stuff. I always use the Home Depot boxes, but um, that's just me. Um, in fact, I learned that from uh, Bearded Picker. He's the first Amazon thing. I, when I was first getting Amazon, he's one of the first people I watched on Amazon. But uh, anyway, Amazon's great for things. Amazon's even good for, say, comic books. I've sold movie posters on Amazon, records, trade cards, postcards, action figures, Legos, Migos. Um, geez, there's so much stuff we've sold on Amazon. Any type of record I've sold. Um, I've even sold transcriptions, acetates, um, uh, um, cylinder records, uh, all on Amazon. And I've always got more money on Amazon for the ones that sold on Amazon versus what I sell them on, on eBay for. Um, again, discogs for records, books, you've got a lot of options. Now, clothing... I'm I'm steering from from the constant conversations I hear from folks and people reach out to me that I think at right this moment and I could be wrong if you're selling more in style clothing right now you're probably doing better on Poshmark over eBay. I could be wrong. Again, I don't do clothing anymore, but uh, I've I've heard that from far too many people and I, I've all I hear from clothing sellers on on eBay is that it's hard to sell you've got to market and promote everything free shipping you got high returns I, I don't hear it any of that stuff on Poshmark from the majority and I know there's folks that have completely brought their entire store from eBay over to Poshmark um, I don't know you have to tell me if, if, if there is a if you're having better luck with Poshmark um, please leave some comments down in the comment section below the video itself. Um, I'd be interested to hear that. Now, Macari, I think that's how it's pronounced. Again, I don't really pay much attention to something I don't use, but I'm still on the path of, uh, I, I haven't talked to her, but I'm going to still have to set up something with Kat, the, the nurse flipper. Um, in fact, maybe I'll try and text her after the show, but um, I'm still not going to mess with it because of them holding the funds. Now, I heard some explanations on that from folks, but I didn't hear anything from them. They have reached out to me a couple of times, but I'm not, I don't want to give some false Mercari preview just for a couple grand because I'm not that type of person. I don't really care about that. Um, I'd rather not make the money and, and just be myself, truthfully. I'm more principled. I'm not trying to be a rich millionaire. I don't want some fancy sports car. Um, you know, we for the first time we bought an SUV, but um, I, a minivan was fine with me. Um, I'm not, I don't buy fancy cars. I don't care if I won the lottery. I'm not going to buy a fancy car. You're just going to see me driving around the same old thing, truthfully. So that's just me. Um, yeah, I'm not flashy. Um, most people would not wear an Elvis shirt, you know. I like Elvis, but anyway. Um, hopefully that makes, makes some sense on those. Let's see where else. E-Crater, some people have brought up. I don't know. I've I looked at their their. Um, it's about the same level I would gather as as Bonanza. Um, if you're unaware of of that, um, Depop. It, I don't I don't like the phone app, so that's not for me. But um, what's the other one? Somebody. Oh shoot! There was one more I wanted to bring up. Um, I don't do clothing, so the real real for me is nothing. Um, there's another high end one that does purses. I can't remember. Shoot. Uh, hip, if you do comics, trade cards, or postcards, hip, you'll get sales. I, I, I get multi-item sales, too. I just mailed out, today was 80 bucks. I shipped out 80 bucks off of hip. That's, honest to God, what I sold off of hip today. That was eight items on hip. Postcards, die cuts, and trade cards. All three of those I sold today. Eight items, 80 bucks. $86.23. That's a true, true my today sales on, on hip. On just hip, postcards. Um... So again, those are three other sites. Dell Camp, again, please look up Dell Camp. You might be surprised that there actually is a site that's that big that you probably never heard of. Again, it is a foreign site. You, you would have to ship probably overseas some items. I don't mind shipping overseas, so, you know, it's not a big ordeal. You have to understand VAT and all that kind of stuff, too. You have to follow the rules. Um, I don't have a problem with a lot of that kind of stuff, though, because we've done it for, for so long. Um... Let's see. There was another one. Uh, again, look up niche sites. You know, buy whatever niche you have. There's a fireman's site. There's a railroad site. If you if you have like uh, you get transportation items, they sell far 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 well on on other sites besides eBay, like specific sites. Um, or an auction house like say Heritage may have a transportation auction. 
There's even some regional auction houses that will have these mega sales. And again, live auctioneer, what's the other one? Um, EstateSales.com, I think it is. And they'll have uh, auctions on there too. But you'll see regional ones. And you can you know, put stuff in those sales, believe it or not. You'd be surprised. It doesn't have to always be just from the sale. Around here, you can put your stuff in uh, um, one of the auctioneer sites locally. And in many cases, sell it for more than you would on, on eBay. Not all the time as well too if you underprice something on ebay it sells you know you're screwed it's gone so let's see where else you know honestly that's really the the biggest ones out there that i would tell you that's that's the the, the majority of the ones that i've i touch on walmart if you're doing nos walmart's not terrible um i know there's some integration issues uh with walmart and stuff with some of the other big sites but you can sell on walmart it takes a little longer to get get you know get the ability we have a Walmart account. Um, Amazon again. You can sell collectibles. You won't get into the collectibles category because it's still it's been gated for since I've been on it. Um, we got lucky. I bugged them so much. I guess they just got PO'd and wanted me to stop. I don't know. But anyway, we're, we got in. Um, but you don't have to sell it in the collectibles section uh, again. When we with our new setup, I'm probably going to just be throwing it all out to wall art, most of the antiques and stuff, at least paper stuff, even if it's just a postcard for frameables. That's what I'm going to market and put them on Amazon. I've already called and we've, we've talked and I've emailed back and forth on Amazon about questions on those specifics. Again, I'm, I have other people who have done the exact same thing in my Patreon group who just push it out to, to wall art on Amazon. So, I mean, those are your biggest options. Yeah, it would be Ruby Lane's another one, but I I don't like the clicks over there. I know it's not necessarily the site itself, but um, I didn't also like that the the um, owner was sending out nasty. What I felt personally was a nasty email to the sellers. They they tried to charge uh, a processing fee to the buyer when they bought from you, and that set off a lot of people. And from that point on, I decided I'd just stay away from Ruby Lane. Ruby Lane used to be okay when back in the day, because we messed with it eight, ten years ago or something. Um, but you know, I've had some sourness towards towards that. Um, I can't think of anything else that I would be missing on that list. Those are really the ones that I would I would spend time on. Again, part of it part of its uh, ease of use or uh, traffic to the specific site like Bonanza I know people say well I get some trickling once in a while I don't know for me just the hassle of me forgetting to look because I had a sale in two weeks and then somebody buys and then I tick off a customer I think that would bother me um, more so than I'd, I'd probably lose a repeat chance if it was a good sale I saw a lot of niches and Bonanza just doesn't show up when you search for something and, and what I sell um, you know, tr do a trending search for Bonanza and see what happens. That's the only thing I'd say. So I don't want to have to learn something new if I'm not going to get a return out of that investment. I guess that's the point. And to get three sales a year, four sales a year, one a month, to have to spend hours of my time or worrying about sinks and making sure if it sells there, it's actually syncing up with eBay or whatever. I, I, I have to worry about that. Uh, there was an issue with HIP this morning. I have 5,000 less items showing up on HIP. They're aware of it. He already contacted me like 10 minutes after I sent an email. I was really surprised. It was really quick. Um, and he said there was a backup and it should be back to normal and, and by tomorrow. So I'm fine. They were nice. They directly answered it without putting a bunch of BS. It took two seconds to ask. And anyway, stuff does happen, but it's very rare. For the size that HIP is, they have very few, few issues ever. Again, and you can sell more than on, on HIP postcard. You can sell pretty much any type of, of Inferium. Any type of paper can be sold on there. Any type. You don't just have to have postcards. And the trade card, uh, HIP car, uh, tr uh, HIP cards. What is it? HIP, hip or uh, HIP comics. You can sell trading cards uh, like uh, Marvel and all that stuff can be sold. And you can sell posters. You can sell T-shirts. Anything related to the comic artist or the comic, uh, like super, anything Superman, you can pretty much sell on the site. Action figures, even. Same thing with Amazon. You can sell all that stuff on Amazon. You can sell your vintage Migos on Amazon. And they do sell. I know people say, oh, I ain't going to sell, I ain't going to sell, but they do sell. Let's hop over to the, the questions and comments here. Uh, I know I'm terrible on that. I know I've been yapping for an hour and we haven't got to them, but... Everybody wanted to know those questions. I wrote down a list of questions I felt I should address. Our 1099 has not shown up yet. 
I know there, there's a big, huge article on e-commerce bites. Go to e-commerce bites. She's even got a follow-up, I think, on the 1099s with some of the comments made and stuff. So, yeah, I've I've actually got copies of a few people's that are definitely wrong. They did share them with me, but um, didn't ask for them. I'm not trying to pry in someone's personal stuff, but they did. I don't. They blocked out a few numbers. Just FYI. Just I do have copies of them though. But hey, Susan, how are you doing? Yes, Danielle, as we said, Charles Lowe, good evening. Mutton Ridge Finds, how are you doing? Hey, Linda, how are you doing, Linda? Ping G, and I got Daryl, Carolina Picks, how are you doing, Daryl? Angelo, good evening. Uh, hey, Jeff, how are you doing, Jeff? Uh, anybody, if you're in Patreon, I responded to everything all day long. I was on Patreon all day long today. I don't think there's a thing that I didn't go back through at all. I hit them all up last night, too, so... Um, the next uh, 30 days, I've probably got 45 um, live chats with individuals set up over some plans for future stuff going on. Um, again, so there's a lot of opportunity going forward. My reselling plans have changed. I am branching out. We're going to probably bring in a couple more staff um, before I hit the chat. I just want to throw this out there. So Again, eBay, eBay made me do some things I wouldn't have probably done. But I think what, what happened, you know, they want to screw me over again. I'll probably come up with even better ways. So, you know, it, this is why they're, they're not a good company like they used to be. And this is why far too many people are going to other platforms. Because they can't, they can't grow the gross volume of merchandise sold on the site. Less items are selling. They're not drawing in the younger folks. They're not drawing in new people. The, the amount of sellers that are going to be dropping off the site will probably increase with the new uh, filing, re not filing, with the new $600 reporting limit. You've always had to pay if you've made a profit over 600 in the first place, but uh, that's there's no new tax law other than them telling the platforms they have to report them now for a far, far less amount with no quantities anymore. So anyway, hey, David, Red Wolf, welcome. Hey, Richard, Richard Johnson's in the house. Crystal, thank you for the very many smiley faces. Vintage Vagabond Vents, how are you doing? How are you doing? Uh, hey, Carol, how are you doing this evening? Thank you very kindly. Tommy Z, welcome. Uh, we will keep on trucking where you go, we go. Yeah, I'm... I'm gonna give. There will be some options for some things. I've got. I've got something in the works. There's obviously, as I said, there are some people that I've been talking to. Some bigger, bigger uh, uh, eBayers. I'm not going after bigger YouTubers. I want sellers. Um, I'm. T I've talked to quite a few sellers now. Uh, um, there's something coming down the line, and not just with me doing something. There's there's some there's another site. I, I got an NDA. I can't go out in too much detail, but there is other stuff works in the works now. I would say, um, I don't know to what fruition everything will come to, but things will change. I, I I'm sure of it. I have no doubt. I've seen some things. I've seen some of what the future is planning. Um, I've been shown and shared some things with from another company, but still. Um, hey, Winter Crow, how are you doing? Sourcing treasures. Good evening. Good evening. You blew the thread up, Jackass Retro. Well, well, thank you. You'll see mine on there. It's under my store name, I think, is what they have them all on. But I did comment, just like I said, right after that. Uh, made made my feelings uh, heard about the CEO and not fixing the glitches and the whole works on the um, on their chat for the updates. They won't. They won't care. I wouldn't be surprised if they deleted it. I know they removed some of my legitimate 100 percent not nasty posts on ebay for business they totally disappeared um i know youtube's been killing some comments without me even getting to them i don't know what's going on with that but you know i don't usually get to read most of them anyway tommy thunder how are you doing katherine good evening uh mark i can't print shipping labels for my phone since this update there was go to e-commerce bite she actually has an article on that i think on how to get that i think you have to download the new app there's a brand new app at the app store um i only use the app to do a few things so i never print from my phone so i don't even not pay any attention but you've got to install the new version go to the play store i think go to ebay and then get the new version make sure the number from your version is the old one if that's the case before you download the new one that should fix that issue. 38 comments on the thread as of first night with zero responses on any from eBay. There, I did see one response, but it's it's 
it's underneath it's like it's locked in and it just it's like a generic it's a generic name but it was an ebay post and it was like a one-liner on somebody asked it, the, the, it's it's on a question that has the number one and number two. It's a two part question that somebody typed up. I can't remember what it, what the question was, but it's literally a one dot and then the question. Then he leaves a space two dot below. That's the only response I personally saw. So I did see one. I don't know what time you were on there. I was up real late, like three or four in the morning. So I don't. Maybe that was after you saw it, Jackass. Angelo, how are you doing? Yeah, eBay is not going to lower fees. It's going to go up. 0.3 every time from this point on would be my guess at least once a year it'll probably be after tax time or if they're if their stocks going down hold your breath because there probably will be a a um, increase to raise the stock value for their shareholders the stocks going down there should never be an increase other than to make wall street happy uh, Matt Jake, I don't think we legally would be able to get a class auction lawsuit in front of them. I think that, that we're pretty much exempt because of the user agreement from everything I've seen. Um, Janet, how are you doing? Australia, I got quite a few people from Australia. Deb Comley, how are you doing? Richard Burton, oh my gosh, where's Elizabeth? Plaque on the wall, yes. Christopher Garrett, Wu-Tang, nothing wrong with Wu-Tang. Other than the, the shrill guy that bought their most uh, valuable record for one point whatever, that was a... Eh. I do listen to old school rap, just FYI. Hey, Marty, Jimmy Flip it in the house. A musician and fellow YouTuber as well. Hopefully you're doing well, Jimmy. Marty. Um, hey, everyone, yes. Michigan uh, Prospector. Uh, Michigan Prospector, uh, below standard sellers, I believe it's now 6%. 6%, not 5%. I do believe they raised that. Hey, Dave, Midwest Picker, another fellow YouTuber here. Check out Dave. He's a good guy as well, too. I might have to reach out and do something with him one of these days. He's on all the time, and I don't mind his um, emoji up there. I would never have my own site like that. I've got something else in the works. Uh, Purple Rain, how are you doing? Uh, big, I remember when Crazy or um, Let's Go Crazy came out. I always liked it. And if the elevator tries to break you down, that's that was my favorite line in that. I, I was having bad times back then financially and you know very good song i was sad when prince passed um i'm a big prince fan back in the day little red corvette party like it's 1990 i mean come on um kiss i mean what can i say i don't even mind um what's his names um the not unusual uh, i can't think of his name he does kiss too his version's not too bad Oh, well, I can't. Tom Jones. I don't even mind Tom Jones' version of stuff, too. Of course, I'm old school. Probably half the people out there don't know who Tom Jones is, but he actually did a, the remake with Love Fool. They got Burning Down the House. Tom Jones doing doing Burning Down the House. I listen to everything, so I, I've listened to that quite a few times, too. RCQ, how are you doing? Um, Zach MC, good evening, good evening. Thank you, Purple Rain. Let, let me put this out there because I take so much hate from people on when me I'm calling on it. I'm going to tell you something, and, and I'll probably take hate for this too. There's a lot of YouTube channels out there who sugarcoat all this and act like nothing's going on. It's just everything's great and dandy because if they don't do that, no one's going to want to pay them for their classes, their courses, their private groups, and all that kind of crap. And that's, that's my opinion on that. I'm allowed, again, I'm not calling out anybody because there's a lot of people who do have good classes and good courses and good paid groups, but there's a lot that don't. And again, I relate to, when I look at stuff like that to see if they're honest and legit at their feedback on the places they saw it. If their feedback's horrid, chances are they're not a good business person. They just want your money. If I wanted everybody's money, I'd put my channel or my YouTube or my uh, um, the sites I sell on. I'd market stuff. I'd call out that I got shirts or something. I'd call out my. I hardly even remember to say something about Patreon, other than when I see a patron in here. I'm 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 into what I do. I don't. I don't this is me. I'm, this is me 24/7. I can't help it. Maybe it didn't used to be, but I guess I've wised up in old age or whatever you want to call it. I, I'm not out to rip somebody off. I've been ripped off my life. I'm not worried about having a Lamborghini or anything else. I don't care about that. I just want to be with my family and spend what time I have left on this planet enjoying myself and not worrying about any of the other crap. 
I can I can be just as happy with a five thousand dollar car as I would with a hundred thousand dollar car. I don't care if there's rust on a car. I don't care if it looks bad. It's always mechanically sound. I've never every single spec on my car mechanically is repaired and everything. I never let anything go. I don't really care about the other stuff. You think I'm a bum because I got rust on a car? Of course, I, we got a newer car. We got a new one we bought for every but. I don't care about all that. I'm, all I care about is if it's going to last me for a while. It's 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 a good vehicle. You know, I drove a real beater for a while that was the best mechanical. It outran every car on the road. It was a Buick Regal, real nice engine, and it was a rust bucket, though. And it could have been painted. I didn't care. I just tooled around. No one stole it. No one ever broke in. You know, it was like, what was that, uh, Urban Camouflage from Silent Live, where it was like, or the Adobe. I don't remember the name of that, but it looked like a junker, and it was actually luxury the inside. My inside of the car was really nice, but anyway, I know that's rambling. Kansas City, Dave, how are you doing, David? Flipping goodies. Yeah, I'm, we're, I was, I did Shopify over a year ago and we were, it was taking too long to get everything worked out. If you start Shopify with less listings than we have, it's a lot easier. And I'm trying to see if I can bring in all of our listings from several, and I know I can, but I don't want to mix up anything. So I'm taking my time this time, or was, we're going full steam this whole weekend. I've got a marathon messing with uh, Inkfrog Shopify. I'm going to, I'm going to be messing around with that. Anyway. Yeah, you can do a lot of things with other other sites hooked up to it. TK431, how are you doing? So the question, why? Well, see, I know I have, somebody's going to say that. Why stay on eBay? Because I get 40% of my reselling revenue from that. Would you give up? If you were making $100, would you just give up 40 of that? I guess that's the best answer I can give you. I'm a business. And if a business decision, if it's not a good business decision, I'm not going to make it. I've worked for a bo bosses, as I said earlier, that were horrid. You know why, why? I have to pay my bills. I have to worry about my own, and you have to bite your pride. I think to me, my father taught me in the, the little time I had with him before he died. My father taught me that you know you always do the right thing. You take care of the family first and foremost. And if if your life is horrid at work, that's that's what a man has to do. Is he takes care of his his loved ones, whoever they may be at all cost and that's me every i always took care of the wife and kids and if it was at my detriment that's the way it has to be because that's the way i grew up my my grandparents were the same way my grandfather did everything for my grandmother and took care of it he didn't have to and my grandmother did her own thing but don't get me wrong it wasn't like like that um, I, I i i i love my wife i love my kids more than my own life itself i have to say i would do anything for them and and if i have to work for a boss that belittled me on, on a daily basis, which happened at Eckerd's on Lee Road, um, I, I did it. I did it. I worked at a night one that was robbed all the time, and it was just terrible. You know, I always worried about getting shot at work and leaving the parking lot at, you know, two in the morning. I just, it was, it was awful. And when I worked at Pilot, the same thing. I, there was a body dumped off in our place. People were stabbed, shot, prostitution, um, rape, robbery. I've got videos, the, the video recording from all the incidents that I had to deal with myself. I've dealt with people dying where I've, I've, I've dealt with a lot of bad stuff. Um, that's the real world for me. I was a manager, so it always came to me. Whoever was the manager on duty dealt with all the crap. Maybe a regular employee wouldn't know anything about it, but I had to deal with it. So you do what you got to do to to cover yourself, to cover your bills. I'd never quit a job unless I had something else lined up. I don't care how bad it got. And In my book, you work through it, you put it up. It makes you a stronger and better person. Even if they're being idiots and they're just asses, I'm, I'm going to be the better person for doing the right thing and protecting myself. Unless I've got another revenue coming in to replace that, I'm not going to dump off that type of percentage. That's why I say my mark is 25%. I can not worry if I'm dropping off 25%. I'm at 40% now. If it drops to 25%, bye-bye. I'll do a big video if it happens, so I'm not going not gonna to hide it. Um, again, you look at it however you want, but that's, that's me. That's, that's how I grew up. That's my father. He died when I was 17 and I've always taken his words to heart, you know, everything about it. Cause my dad was one of the hardest workers. He died of a heart attack. He worked very hard. He worked long hours. He came home and worked and did stuff on the side. He was a hustler. You're not bad hustler. He did cabinetry, built stuff. He did upholstery cut trees down which i used to do we had a wood burning stove so i've climbed big trees with my father i've blocked and tackled off branches and lowered them down i've chopped wood i've 
uh, my dad did anything we could. He never made a lot of money, so I did whatever I helped. And or the weekend, me and my brother used were required to, every Saturday, if he had some work that he was making money on, we would go and do that. That was my, ch I didn't get paid for it. That was what a kid did when I was a kid, you know? I mean, I got allowance. It wasn't much, but, you know. Anyway, I'm, I'm rambling again. Um, 17 is definitely too much. It's getting up there. It'll be 20% at some point. Pax at Granite Tail. How are you doing? You do what you want on the promoting. I can't tell you that. I, you, it's all on you. If I had clothing, I'd probably have to promote, and I probably would promote. I never denied that when clothing. If it's a flooded category, you're SOL to avoid doing certain things. You're not going to get sales, is my personal opinion. You know, the, the amount of money, if you spend on, on promoting on some items, you might come out ahead. I'm, again, I wouldn't do it in personally in anything that I sell. If I sell it, if it's in my store, I wouldn't promote it. Um, again, I don't see the need because it's it has to be the right person. Somebody said, maybe you should try it. Maybe you're missing out and don't know. I, I might do that one day. I don't know. I've, I've thought about it, but I'm still turned off by how they did the the... When they first rolled it out with them saying promote or the ad blocker doesn't block them again somebody else brought that to my attention i did do a video on that and that was what i took a lot of grief i was attacked openly on on youtube and had hate and death threats and stuff over that um that's been a long time ago but uh anyway yes ebay is greedy i 100 percent agree Flipping goodies. eBay should uh, drop promoted and go 15% across the board like Amazon and Walmart. They'll never do it. They should also just drop it down to a cheap use list, everything you want for free, and flood the site with new items. As, as a business, it may not help some of us, may not even help me, but it would be their smart decision. I could understand that move. I can't understand it when they're selling less items and people are leaving the platform. The raising the fee is a last-ditch effort eBay is the only reason eBay is even doing as good as they are is because of the pandemic. Please realize that. That's truthful, in my opinion, based on their numbers before and after it. They got lucky that everybody went online because of the pandemic and made a heck of a lot more money. Now, once the pandemic is waning and people start going back out and wanting to see, and since they've been locked up all this time in the house and don't want to go in public, you're going to see a lot more people doing stuff out, not buying stuff online. That's going to happen. Sales will start to drop in many categories because of that. That's my honest, sincere opinion on what's happened. I'm not saying that's going to kill eBay, but if eBay isn't going to do anything to keep drawing people back into the site, and instead of losing customers, losing products sold, they have to bring more people in across the board. You get more sellers, they're selling more items, and there's more reason for more buyers to come to the platform. It's a no-brainer. That's why when businesses start off, they don't make a profit because they spend so much money on bringing people in. That's the point. It's sometimes, a, like, uh, Twitter didn't make a profit for years. You've got to invest into the site. At this point, eBay is a fledgling in my book. I know they're top in many different areas, but... They're, they're fledgling on the whole aspect. They don't know, in my book, how to bring in new business. Their ploy is just to take what we got, in my opinion, and keep adding fees and ways to garner more revenue from those people they already have. As they lose more and more sellers, less and less merchandise sell on the platform, the only option they will continually have would be to keep raising the prices. Again, that is my take on it. That's what seems to be happening for the last two cycles of updates. Selling Manager Pro, most people don't know what that is. So giving that to us like it's some big deal, cancels. Yeah, they're going to give you a prorated on if you're refunding partial. Fine, fine. I almost never give a partial refund unless it's shipping, and I'm fine with eating a little cost. Usually if I give a partial refund on shipping, I'm keeping a certain percentage to cover those fees. There is nothing wrong with that. If, if they buy two items, they pay separately for each. I surely keep $0.30 cents for the processing fee and the calculated 14% off there. Whatever it happens to be for the category that they're taking their commission off shipping. I'm, I'm only giving them the refund for the actual amount that I'm not billed for. Nothing wrong with that. You're, I, I do it because even if they don't ask. So whatever overage is what I give back to them. So you don't have to lose money even if they do give you the, the percentage back. If they give the percentage back, give them the full amount back. So I still get it either way. It, none of that does much for me. But the majority of people who do a cancellation 
are because they didn't pay for it in the first place or they never even contacted me and never paid for it. Once in a blue moon, somebody will say, hey, it was an accident, blah, blah, blah. Usually if they just change their mind or they wait, I just tell them if, if I cancel, I'll also block you from any future purchases. eBay even stated in a new user agreement that if you're going to bid, you darn well better be serious because it's a, it's a binding uh, legal document when you say your binding legal aspect when you put the bid in. So that's why I say a block them because they're told and warned. If they didn't read the user agreement, that's on them. That's my take on that. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I don't pay to promote anything anymore. I may try it just once in a thousand items just so I can say I tried it. But yeah, I wish we had sabers here, Linda. Our sabers are totally closed down. There isn't one anywhere near us. I'd have to go to like Canada to whatever the other super value or value, whatever they are. Yeah, if you're enjoying the conversation, please hit the thumbs up. I got 179 people in house right now, 186 likes. Seth has. I'm next door to Manhattan. I've been to Manhattan once or twice. Atlas Attic, how are you doing? Hopefully you're doing well. Drunken Data Girl, good evening. Welcome in the house too. Another another fellow YouTuber. I think you still have auctions on there yourself. I've been thinking about that. I did get the okay. I know I can do them now at least. Um, demands on where the rich areas are great. Blah, 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 go down. Can't print as well. Driving me bats. Matt can't print either. I want to check them out. Wait, blah, let me hang on. Nicholas Tracy, how are you doing? Busy girl, good evening. Yeah, I do. I've seen the overcharges too, where they. I've also seen and had probably just today three or four people post that eBay changed a whole bunch of their listings to free shipping. Somebody told me if you list from the app that it's automatically set for free shipping on the app. Now, I don't know if that's true, but the person who posted it, somebody who's posted many, many times in the past. So I would seriously look into that and see because if you're doing it from your phone, that may be built into there. And if you did the new, as I said, you have to update to get rid of um, some of those options like the not printing. So if you update the new version of the app, you darn well better make sure that the settings say that it's free shipping because 90% of the time when eBay rolls out a new setting or something, it's already either on, which will hurt you or do something, or it's off, which you should have it on. Usually, whatever they, they instigate or add something new to one of the site preferences, it's usually the opposite of what I want. You at least have the option to fix it. I hate when they put stuff up and you have no option to change or do anything else with it. That drives me nuts. If they're going to add some feature in, like forcing somebody to put in their payment information before they put an offer in, they darn well better either have it off or tell us right away. And there is that option. It's under block buyers. Why? They don't want you to know where it is, I guess. I don't know. Angela Valdivia. Well, thank you very kindly. Dishonest 5 increase in final value for... Uh, and it says for, uh, which 50% of the time are simply buyer's remorse. Survivor hand. E worldwide 526 on eBay's rank. Huh? On the item night as described, I will have to agree that that opens up the doors. Thanks again for the $10 super chat, Angel. I 100% agree that the ability for somebody to open up a um, item not as described is insane with how they handle it. Now, I do free returns, 30 days. I pay for the return regardless, either way, even if they just want to return it because they don't like it. I can afford to do that. I, and yeah, I'm different than a lot of people because I pay almost nothing for it. And I got just this paper and I, I almost never get one. I completely understand the other side of it when we sold clothing. I completely understand because I'd have people send stuff back and they've stretched out the neck. And I mean, I've seen it all. It's part of the reason I don't mess with clothing anymore. It's a, it's a rat race. It's a fight to the bottom these days in my book. Um, I don't care how much clothing you get. It's the same thing. And then the space it takes up. Oh, my gosh. I've been to garages and it was just nothing but four rows that run as far as their garage could see. Of, of now I have that many of stuff here, but I've got 50 times, 100, maybe more, probably 100 times as much inventory in a half the space of most every single clothing reseller I've ever seen their their storage area. You know, it, it's it's a big thing. The with the item not as described, there there has to be a better way for them to do it. Just, just because someone doesn't like it, I, I, I'm. Whenever that happens, the first thing you should always do is block them from all future purchases. Immediately go in and block them the minute you get up one of those and you're sure it's not correct. 
always accept it though. If, if you're doing the return on it, I never refund them their original shipping cost. Never, never, ever, ever. If they've done anything, if somebody stretched out the collar and it's very obvious and I can post a picture that shows it was stretched, I don't care what eBay has to say. With our level, our store, following the rules, I don't have to give them all their money back. If it's something I can still resell, I will only give them half. If they've totally conned me, I will close it out and then open up a case for fraud against the, the actual buyer. And in, in all the cases, there's only been a couple. In those cases, eBay has just given me my money back and the idiot who tried to scam me. They shouldn't give the idiot back, but again, they're a middleman. They can't say what did or didn't happen. I get that. I understand that. As long as they handle it the way they've been, I'm okay with those. But again, it's not right for the majority of those people out there who have those cases. We all, I say at this point, know that clothing is going to have a high return rate. It's going to. I don't see another way around it. The the uh, if you read the national boards and stuff, or the national like Wall Street Journal or something like that, just the free the free stuff. Look at some of the return rates for last Christmas. It's like what twenty three percent of all merchandise on average is returned last year. It's some high number like that. It's like in the twenty some odd percent. So one in five items from major retailers had a high potential of being returned fairly quickly right after the season was done. That That's factual information. So if you want to be safe, don't sell the items that have high return rates. I know clothing is a, is a gateway into reselling. I did it. I, I'm not saying don't do it, but at some point you may want to transition into stuff that have a far less return rate, far less storage space. Your store, the more stuff, the more space something takes, the less of it you can sell unless you spend more money. I mean, it's a big factor there, I have to say. Oh, I just saw another, hang on, I'm sorry. I don't want to miss somebody who's, somebody, Winter Crow. Well, thank you very kindly. I, I honestly and sincerely appreciate the $5 Super Chat. I don't want to miss, I know I'm terrible on that. I think I missed some last week and I should have went back in and double checked it. I said I would only go a little while today, but let's let's finish some conversation here. I, I got a little time. I'm not gonna not gonna cut it off now. Um, almost six million post. It used to be seven something. I know it was five five million and some odd. So they lost roughly two million postcards from what I saw. Um, Uh, hang on, I'm trying to get to where I was. Well, I think I've totally lost my feed. I don't know where I'm at. I'm sorry. Somebody's saying eBay's trying to call sellers. eBay's just not smart. They're not trying to call sellers. They, they, they would want more sellers. It does not look good for eBay to try and get rid of sellers. That's the factual. If you know business, you're, you're going to know they're not trying to call any sellers. That's a ridiculous comment. Um, there would be no sense to it because eBay's uh, stockholders, shareholders, Wall Street would lose faith if they can't draw more people to the platform. Anybody thinking eBay's trying to get rid of sellers is stupid. Is, I'm not going to say stupid, but not thinking as a business aspect. There would be no sense in eBay spilling off people on the site. Everybody is a new seller at one time. eBay has been promoting themselves as a way to make extra money with what's going on. They want to keep them. eBay knows, I'm sure they have to know, because they, if they're not, they're, they're, eBay is, is so dense it's not even funny. eBay looks at numbers, I, I guarantee it, from people who buy as well as from the sales. So if you're a, a, a seller on the site, chances are you buy on the site as well eBay is smart enough to know that if they run anybody off, it's going to make their numbers look bad. The less items they have on the site that sell, the far less the value is of the company. There's no reason whatsoever a true business corporate American place is going to cut off small-time sellers or, or try to get rid of people on the platform. It makes absolutely no sense from a business structural aspect. Every business, and I ran, I had my own region with $11 million. I had 31 stores under me for many years. I know how businesses run. I've seen it from the corporate office side myself. I've seen the financials for a company that did like $30 million a year. I know how the stuff works from doing it. No company is going to cut their 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 feet off and, and lose purchases as well as sales at the same time. When eBay reports numbers that show less 
people selling on the platform and less volume sales sold, they can be, they can be downgraded as a company, as a stock. No company in the right mind is going to want to lower that. The cost of acquisition for new buyers is horrendously high for many companies. No company in their right mind is going to cut their, their feet off and, and sink lower. eBay looks good when their numbers keep going up. If you just look, again, this is why I know that would, that would never be a thing. When Facebook reported no new people coming onto the platform, their stock started to go down. That, that's what's going to happen if eBay keeps reporting less sellers on the platform. More sellers on the platform means more items for sale. When there's more items for sale, more buyers are going to come on the platform. This is this is business 101. Take one class and you'll know enough to say there's no sense in running people off the platform. It makes no sense from a, from a financial standpoint, from a business standpoint, from a corporate standpoint, in any way, shape, or form. It makes no sense. Unless eBay is that dense, which I don't think there are, I can guarantee you they have reports that compare people that sell. They've got to know that maybe 3, 5, 10% of all sales could come from sellers or of buyers of, of sales of items can come from people who actually sell as well. The more people you have on the site, when people are making money on the site, they feel good about the site, they'll invest time and they'll buy things on the site. Again, that's why none of that would make any sense. They're not trying to get rid of or cut people off the platform. I would never, ever believe that in, in my wildest dreams at all, that that would be any ploy whatsoever. Now, like the CEO saying, low-valued buyers. From his standpoint, he's a millionaire. It, he, somebody quoted a number that he was probably like $35 million or something. I don't know if that's true, but maybe it is. He, he, he's not... He's not in any of my levels. He's 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 in living in his own gated community. And probably never shops, has a maid and housekeepers and gardeners. Somebody takes care of their pool. Maybe has an elevator for his car. I don't know. Don't really care. He's not in our level. So when he he says that, he's just talking down because we're the the peons. We're plebs to them. You know. So it's not the same same aspect. So I, again, I don't relate that to him trying to get rid of people. I just relate it to him being, you know, out of touch with the real people of this country, the vast majority of people who aren't millionaires and don't drive four different cars that cost a million a piece or whatever. I don't know what he does, but that's the point. No one, there would be no, no practicality to to run people off the site. You know, they they just kick them off if there was a problem. They lock their account if they're screwing around with money. That's what they've been doing. Again, I just talked about that. Look at the 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 um, the new what's it called? The new um, the user agreement they've got the 30-day holds now listed on there. So again, they're they're saying up front that that could happen. They even posted why it could happen. So and I talked about that too. I I, I can understand it, but the length of time is my issue. I can see a hold until the, the everything clears and is delivered, which is something they used to do in the past. If you didn't know that, even PayPal used to do that. You used to hold your money until stuff was marked as delivered and all this other stuff. So I don't have any problem. I understand, that especially if you're new, that eliminates people and crooks and stuff. A lot of people, or a lot of people on the site that do some of the bad stuff are sometimes sellers that have been on for a long time. Every year, as I said, we've one person tries to scam us, and I only buy from people with good feedback who usually have been on for a long time, and many times it may be people like that. So, you know... Just because someone's got good feedback on there for a long time doesn't mean out of somewhere they could have a dire need and do something stupid. So anyway, I would not ever anticipate that they're running people off, though. Brian asks, what's the actual... You're saying it's $3 for 1000 right? If you sell... It could be a thousand dollars for for you for a year. It could be ten thousand dollars for a person for a year. It's not just that amount. Your percent your your percentage of fees. If again back to the the media, it's fourteen per fourteen point some percent. You've got to add a couple percentage onto that to cover the cost of them taking fees out of shipping. You're you're looking at just one percentage here, one aspect of it. And don't forget, they've raised it just last year as well. It's every year. It's every single year. It's going to be 20% at some point, the actual number. Again, they're, they're taking a, a dip out of everything. Well, thank you, Angel, for the $5 super chat. And for over three days in a row, almost the scan sheet of the shipments on the day are not printing when they have it. 
Yeah, I've, I've come to the conclusion that it's jammed up and the server that does it is too busy and can't handle printing around the same time. If you print sheets at 11 o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern Standard, or at 11 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time, sometimes you have to try three or four times. If you're talking about the master scan sheet, I sometimes have to try that three or four times if I'm early, early to do it. If I print it right at 11, so sometimes I was actually thinking about changing our shipping time from 11 to 12 just because of that. I think it's just jammed up and they don't have enough infrastructure to handle the amount of people printing at the same time. That's my opinion. I, I completely understand that. I, I did look into it. I don't know how we can tell for sure, but if I do it a little later, it works fine. I'm, th I'm assuming that's basically what you have too on that. Thanks again for those super chats. I honestly appreciate it. 419 here. That's Arena Visions. Welcome. Um, I have a collection of RV butterflies, uh, vintage Hot Wheels on eBay. Wish you luck with those. They can sell, as we all know. Brian S., what is the actual monthly? Yeah, we already talked about toys make more money on Etsy, but it's slow. Yeah, Ryan, I've heard that too. I I don't list many toys on there. They've got to be used in vintage to begin with. Um, again, it, it's a specialty item. There's probably three or four places you can list toys besides eBay and get some traction on them. They're not going to be super, super quick, but your money, your dollar amount's good. I know the percentage may be a little higher, but you usually get it more, more than that. Um, designs by Josie. How are you doing? I spent more on Etsy than I ever made. Even with the fee hikes, I do like this. Some of those sellers will leave because of the new changes. More money in my pocket. It doesn't mean there's going to be more money in your pocket. It doesn't mean you're going to get visibility on eBay, though. That's, see, that's the thing. Even if people leave, that doesn't mean that there's going to be more room for you. That's that's not how it works. There's no causality. There's no cause versus effect in that, that, that idea. It's just like if you promote something, there's no guarantee it's going to sell better promoted. No guarantee whatsoever. It just may mean you give up a percentage of your things. And like with them raising the fees, don't forget now, you're paying more for your promoted right off the bat. So even if you're giving a 4%, it's actually going to be 5% when you weigh in that they're taking a commission off your shipping and your taxes. So whatever you put into your, your, your amount that you want to give them for your promotions, don't forget, it's not just 4%. It's actually technically more than that of your actual sale price of the item. Because they're taking a dip now for all the, for, for the basics. One of the promoted ones are taking a dip on it. I'm sure they won't do it to the other ones till the next round on the next update would be my guess. Uh, here's Cy Wilco. Jan was awful. Uh, Feb. Feb has been superb. Ditch promotions. That's what somebody else is saying. Again, I don't use it. Uh, I don't know what not at all. Kurt, it's, it's Shopify, not Spotify. And mine's not open yet. Those in Patreon know what it is, so when it is open, they'll get first a uh, first look. Crispy Toys and Treasures, how are you doing? Running as auctions. Huh, I'll have to look at that. Yeah, Alfonso, Alfonso, here's a good point. He's making an excellent point here. Sometimes it's better to be a big fish in a smaller pound or a smaller pond, less competition. Some of the, the niche sites you can do far better because of that. I'm telling you, I'm, that's from personal experience. Hey, Jess, how are you doing? Good evening. Swamp Picker, good evening. Yep, six million, as you said. Thanks, Jess. Hey, Audie, how are you doing? Yes, I am feeling better. Thank you very kindly. I think you had posted something, too. I know I responded to everybody out there. So if you're on Patreon and have something posted, I did ask a few questions on several people. Macari, I'm still the the whole thing with what they did to Catherine's flipper. I'm that turned me off, and I've heard three other people that told told me the same thing that they locked their stuff or they just automatically shut down their store as soon as they got more than so many items up. They don't tell you why. I I understand that it was probably due to them wanting to be safe and check you out because all of a sudden you're throwing a bunch of stuff up. But they're not telling anybody. There's no communication. So without the communication aspect, a lot of people jumped that they just shut them down and weren't going to help them. So I'm always, I don't like that. I don't. I think you got to be be up with it. Steve, yeah, Del Camp, there you go. 
It's uh, saved on my my links up here on my um, top of my screen. Sometimes I buy um, Muscle Men from Japan. I'm not going to try. Kenny Kuman, yeah. Hockey God 98. I've done that. I've got some in my store right now. I got, I think, a lot of 30 up right now of Muscle Men. Hey, Rob, how you doing? I know you'd love hanging out with the grandson. I, I can't wait one of these days. Um. Ladybug, aren't Amazon's fees high? They're higher than some of the eBay overall. It's like a standardized fee, but I can list and sell the items for more money, so I actually make more even with higher fees. That's how that works in my book. Again, with for Best Life, if, if you're sending in for FBA, I use the app. It tells me my percentage after all the fees, after everything is said and done. So if you're using the app, just Amazon's free app, you already know the profit margin. I don't care what the fees are. I'm only looking at the amount of money I can make. So if I send in 100 items and I'm going to make 8 bucks an item, I don't care what the fees are. That's $800. I'm buying it all at once. I don't have to touch it. I don't have to ship it. No hassles, no nothing else. I'm done with it. That's the end of the story for that one. So again, I don't mind paying more percentage if I get something out of it. With eBay, if they raise the fees, they don't, they're not providing new customers. They're not providing anything. They're not handling the services for me. I have to do more work to, do, to get the same amount of sales. So there's no, I'm not getting anything extra out of return out of it. I don't, I, I, I don't mind paying half of the percentage if it's the right item, if it's the right deal, if, if it's saving me hours worth of labor or time or work. I level, levy in all my time and efforts into whatever I do so I know if it's okay. If I'm fine making 20 bucks profit on something, even if they're taking, you know, half the profit, I'm fine with that. Uh, uh, sometimes it's easy just to turn stuff over, mail it in or send it in and be done with it. Mary Ramsey, how you doing? Well, thank you very kindly. Thank you for the $10 super chat. That's very, very nice of you. I, I honestly and sincerely do appreciate that. Very gracious of you. Um, hopefully that makes sense on the Amazon, Amazon aspect on it. Uh, Teresa Brewer. It's a curse. Uh, I would rather not be OCD and and have the other to uh, issues and tweaks and stuff I got going on. It, it sometimes it's it's distracting to myself. I can't get stuff out of my head and I can't turn off one mode to another mode. Like if I want to go to family time, sometimes it's really hard to shut stuff off in my brain. It's it's not wired right. I guess I don't know. It's it's annoying. It's it's. It gets me frustrated more than eBay does in many cases because I can't stop, can't stop doing something until I finish it or it's out of my head. And then, like if I hear a song, I have an earworm for days sometimes. You know, uh, this is how we do it. I I can't tell you how many times I listen to that song. <laughs> uh, it sounds crazy, but uh, that's how it is. Thanks again, Mary. I do appreciate that. Bay is rough, but it's just the easiest, fastest way to sell. It, that can be the case in many, many ways. So again, that's why I still put up with it. And I just, I listed as put up with it. I don't enjoy it like I used to. It used to be fun for years and years, decades. I mean, it used to be really fun, but they've turned it into such a dredging thing that you have to repeatedly do stuff like three times a week, every week of your life that's unrelated to listing new items. And that's that's the aspect. On Amazon, if your items are, are good, they're going to show up even if they've been up for 10 years. You know, that's how I see it. I think we're going to cut it off. I think I've rambled way too long today. My throat's getting to bother me a little bit. Um... We'll touch on one more busy girl here. I don't have return issues, but I don't get feedback. Anyone else not getting feedback? Don't know what I'm doing wrong. People just don't tend to leave feedback anymore, in my opinion. And I've come to the conclusion, just like if you're on Amazon, you know that you may get one feedback for like every 200 items sometimes. I mean, it really seems like that. And it comes down to the same process, I think, is why it doesn't do that way on eBay anymore. There's not the... It's not fun like it was, for one thing. So people don't get into specifics. If you're a seller on, on eBay, most people just say it's eBay. I bought it off of eBay. They never say, I bought it from Don's store on eBay. They all Everybody says is, I bought it on eBay. 
They've kind of made every store set up the same. They all look the same. Most people don't think of, of a, a specific vendor on eBay or seller on eBay as their own entity anymore in my book, just like on Amazon. And that's the why I, uh, the way or why I think it's honestly the reason that people don't leave as much feedback anymore. That's, that's from me looking at it for years and years and years. It, it used to be different. And then the, the structure of it's basically changed. It's not as fun anymore. Auctions aren't the thing. The, the ones I can tell you, if, if you start to work on repeat customers, your feedback ratings will go up. You'll get far more feedbacks if you do uh, repeat customers because they are coming back to you and know who you are. You're not eBay to them. You are Don. You are Busy Girl. You are our Mary or whatever the case may be. You are somebody individual. It's hard to break free and be an individual in a site that big. The only way you do it is distinguish yourself in certain categories or niches where those where everybody in that niche knows who you are. And, and that's whatever the niche is. It can be bicycles. It could be shoes. It could be uh, football or, or sports equipment, cleats or whatever. Whatever you sell, you, you make yourself known in that category and you'll get more feedback in, in, from stuff from people buying in that category. That, that's my take on it. And, and when you do that, most people have more responses on feedback that do the niches and do repeats than those who don't. You can look at them. You can figure it out for yourself. There's, it's very easy to figure that out. But anyway, that's my take on that. If, if eBay starts sending notices before the item is actually delivered to leave feedback, you're going to get people mad is what I think. If you bug people for feedback and send them reminders and stuff, they, they'll get aggravated, I think, because there's too many of those that go out. I don't send reminders. I know I got a lot of feedback, but... Obviously, more would be better, but I don't send anything out. If they leave it, they leave it. If they don't, they don't. I even sometimes don't mess with feedback. I'm in a hurry. I bought a, a, some tape or something. I may not go back even on Amazon. I, I've very rarely left feedback on Amazon, honestly, because I don't think about it. Because it's just Amazon, usually. And, and you're not... If it, who, who, I don't pay attention, usually, who has the buy box. I pay attention to their feedback rating, maybe, but I don't always go back in and leave feedback. You know, and I should know better, and I should probably do it more, but it, sometimes you just don't think about it if you're buying. Your life's busy. If we're a reseller, I don't have time to always worry about everything like that. That's my take on feedback. Uh, I, I don't see it any other way. Honestly, I, I, I can't see any other way that that's the, that has to be the reason. Just like with, with eBay, you know, doing these moves, I don't see it to cut, <laughs> cut customers of any, any kind. Sellers are buyers. Uh, end of story. And and if their number again, when their numbers drop for the amount of sellers, their their uh, stocks dropped. They know the number. You have to keep bringing new people on, buyers and sellers, for your for you to look good on Wall Street. That's 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 the facts. Come on, I mean, look at the numbers. Read some of the read Wall Street. Take Business 101. If you take Business 101 in college, take it as a survey. You can deduct it from your. It's a business expense. You want to know some more stuff about it? Take a one college class. Survey it. Don't worry about the credit. Just do it. Turn that in. Deduct it from your cost. It's it's an investment into your business. You know, a lot of people miss a lot of that kind of stuff. I worked for Corporate America. I worked in corporate office before. I was a regional manager with 31 stores, thirty maybe around 33 if you count some of the little small little subbies, but... I've seen it. I've heard the reports. I've heard the conversations. I've been to stock the, the the stock shareholder meetings even before for the company I worked for. So I've I've seen it. I've I've watched them. I've seen what they look at. I've seen, um, you know, I've had to put projections and stuff together for five year plans for you know multi million dollar uh, regions. I I've seen it. I've done it. I've dealt with it. I've lived in corporate America world for many years. I didn't like it at all, but I did it. Um, any, you have to keep bringing more into it. There's, there's absolutely no other way. Your numbers drop, you're going to look bad. Your stocks are going to fall. So no one was, no one in their right mind would ever scare people off. They know that every time somebody leaves, they're going to another platform. They're just losing revenue. It, again, that's it's it's business 101. That's the most basic aspect of of business. You get more onto your site. You get as much people on your site. Uh, a new, new person selling is going to be attracting more business. They're going to call their friends. I got this for sale. I got that for sale. Again, it, it all, is, is, if they're doing it right, brings more people in. New sellers bring more items. More items bring more more buyers. Sellers are buyers. Again, that's it's, it's basics. That's just the basics. But anyway, I'm going to let you go. I appreciate everybody coming on tonight. Hopefully you all had a good day. Hopefully you are working on your store. Hopefully you're thinking outside the box for new ways, new places. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. 
Don't do it. Have a backup plan. Have backup plans for everything. Don't trust one single place that could hold your money, whether it's eBay, Amazon, Etsy. Etsy has had issues of them doing it as well, too. So anyway, I'll let you all go. I talked for far too long. I, I'm sorry. apologize. I ramble. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And I thank all of those who gave Super Chats as well.